Hey guys, welcome to a video review on this brand new Roland MPU-401 compatible media interface card. Here we have the Roland Dream Team consisting of an MT32 and a sound canvas. And these are the type of devices that anyone looking for an intelligent mode MPU-401 MIDI interface uh, is likely going to use. This MIDI interface card is basically the outcome of a community project or a hobby project, you can call it, from the Vogons forums. Two people were involved. They go under the names of Karopi and Moms, and you can find them on the Vogons forums. There's a dedicated uh, thread about this product, and I will put it down below in the description. A lot of work goes into developing such a MIDI interface card and I'm really excited that I'm able to support this project. And of course, I will share everything about this MIDI interface module with you guys. In this video, we will have a discussion about what a Roland Intelligent Mode MPU-401 MIDI interface is and what benefits this gives you. We will also have a look at all the features of this uh, MIDI interface card. We will take a look at how all the cables connect to each other. So I'm going to use my DOS time machine and I'll show you how to connect it to a few Roland MIDI devices. And at the end, of course, we're going to cover the price and if you're interested, how you can order one. On most ISA sound cards, you will actually find a MIDI interface already included. This is a AW64 and the MIDI interface is on the joystick port. So you might be wondering, why do I need an intelligent mode MPU-401 card if a normal sound card already has one included? One reason is compatibility with games that support the Roland MT32 classics from Sierra and Origin, but also games like Gateway, Laser Squad or A10 Tank Killer expect a intelligent mode MIDI interface and will not work with a standard sound blaster. The other reason why you might be interested in using a dedicated MIDI interface card is because a lot of the Sound Blaster 16 sound cards have a buggy MIDI interface. You get hanging notes in various games and you can avoid this by using the Sound Blaster 16 purely for digital speech and sound effects and letting the dedicated MPU 401 MIDI interface card handle all the communication with the wavetable board or external MIDI devices. Here we have a nice little selection of MIDI interface cards. On the left we've got the original Roland MPU 401 AT. Quite expensive, if you do see one on eBay, be prepared to pay a few hundred dollars at least. This one does have a wavetable header just like the card we're reviewing today, but we will cover the features in more detail later. On the right side, we've got another model. This is the MIDIMAN uh, MM401. Not 100% compatible. There are a few games that don't work on this card, but otherwise, it's not a bad model either. And up here, we've got the previous version uh, of this card. This one sold at the end of 2016, and we can see quite a few improvements on this model. So we're going to have a look at the features of this card next. So let's take a closer look at the card. Up the top here we have a wavetable header. So you can use a standard wavetable board like this one. This is uh, from NEC which is basically a clone card to the Yamaha and yep it just fits on there like any other wavetable board. You can also see that uh, there's a hole that lines up with this one so you can get a plastic standoff to give your wavetable board a bit of extra stability. The green port is a standard 3.5 millimeter audio output which carries the signal from the wavetable board. We have two jumpers here. These let you control the volume or gain. You can configure them to be low, medium or high. We also have a header here with four pins. This lets you use one of these uh, CD-ROM audio cables that you might be familiar with to connect the MIDI interface card and the wavetable output internally to another sound card. Down here we have two jumpers that lets you configure the resources. Now I highly recommend that you don't change them. The default configuration that most games look for is address 330 
and interrupt two, and that's how the card is configured right now. If you wanna change the address to 300, you just remove the port jumper, so it's now on 300, now back on 330, and if you wanna change the interrupt, you just move this one here, so we are on interrupt two now, this one is interrupt three, then we've got interrupt five and interrupt seven, but like I said before, you don't wanna move this, the uh, default is interrupt two and port address 330. So here we have the back of the card. This is the 3.5 millimeter audio output from the wavetable board. And this is the MIDI connector. Now included is this breakout board and you just connect it like that. And you can see we have two yellow ports here. So these are MIDI outputs, but they're not two individual MIDI outputs. They are basically, think of them as a MIDI hub or a MIDI splitter. So the same MIDI out signal uh, gets uh, split and you can then drive two MIDI devices. And you get these two cables. So you plug them into here. One goes into there, and the other one goes in here. And on the end, you've got your standard MIDI adapters. Now, there is also the pink adapter. This one is for MIDI input, but I'd be very surprised if anyone is gonna use that. Basically, if you wanna plug in a MIDI keyboard and do some, yeah, create some music. So most of you will just use the two MIDI outputs. So just wanna make a few more comments about this breakout board. Two of these cables are included. If you need a replacement or a third one, I will put a link down below in the description where you can order one. Also, you can use these in both ports. So you can plug them in into the MIDI input, but that means you only get one MIDI output. If you have some experience with soldering, especially working with cables, there's good news. You can basically create your own cable uh, the way you like it. Maybe you just want a single MIDI output or maybe you want both MIDI outputs and the input. So there is a pinout um, of this DB9 connector and how to wire everything up. I will put a link down below in the description and you don't need any active components. All the logic is uh, being taken care of the card. So really you just need to connect the wires between the correct pins. So let's have a look how everything gets connected up. Here we have my DOS time machine. This is a SuperSocket 7 computer custom built with the caches disabled. So it's very compatible with DOS and we've got ISA slots and we're gonna uh, install the MPU for one MIDI card and then we're gonna connect a Roland MT32 as well as a Roland Sound Canvas. We're gonna go for this ISA slot. Notice that the card is an 8-bit card so this means you can use it in a 286 without any problems. So I'm just gonna also uh, secure the card with a screw here so that it doesn't uh, wiggle or get damaged. So now we're gonna connect the breakout board at the back and then we're gonna plug in both of our MIDI cables. So these are female and what we need now are two standard MIDI cables like that with two male connectors to connect the M MPU MIDI interface card to our Roland devices. So let's do the first one. We just gotta make sure that it all lines up correctly. So that's the uh, first one done. And then we take the end and that one goes into the MIDI in of the MT32, just like that. And then we use the second MIDI cable and we're just gonna line it up here. There you go, that's the second one done. And that one goes into the MIDI in of the sound canvas. And this is how everything looks connected up. It's very straightforward and neat. I do like the integrated MIDI hub that saves you from buying an external one. So you can drive two MIDI devices simultaneously and you just turn off the device that you don't wanna use uh, when you're playing a game. For example, if you're playing a M232 game, you turn on the M232, turn off the sound canvas, and later if you play a game that supports general MIDI, you will turn off the M232 and power up the sound canvas. 
So hopefully I covered everything, what this is, what it does and how you connect it. Now, if you're interested in getting one of these, you're looking at 125 euros, but that includes international postage. The order process is through a Google Docs sheet. You put in your name, you basically fill out the details, your name and an email address, and that will contact you with payment methods. If you follow the Vogons thread or you're part of our Facebook group, you will see a couple of happy customers showing off their brand new MIDI interface cards. Now, I did a video on the previous model in 2016 and all I can say is that the cards sold out very quickly. Down below in the description, you can find all the interesting links. For example, a link to the Google Docs sheet where you can place an order, but also to the Vogons thread with more information, such as diagrams, schematics, or a pinout for the DB9 connector. So there you have it, guys. What an awesome project. This is really the ultimate MPU-401 MIDI interface card with features that no other card has. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them, but I'm pretty sure that the two creators will also hang around and answer some of your questions. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you soon with another one.